and we could set up from here. So, straight off the bat, we have got some very, very top-end cards in this, and a lot of really bad ones as well. We have had the addition of some objectives, which obviously have added into the list as well. We're going to start off with our king in Benzema. 97 Benz is outstanding. He's such a good card. Obviously, already has a 97 already, so... It there's not too much really to kind of add on to this card other than he is just as good as his team of the year. The biggest difference between these two is mainly this guy has a five star skill and a four star weak foot and his team of the year has a four star and a five star. I'm not too sure why they swapped it round. Would have been really nice to see Benzema with a 5-5 five five, purely for the fact that a 99 if we was to get in footies is not going to be too much more different, but the 5-5 five, five element, maybe they are waiting, would have been sensational with him. Another one on that list in the French nation is going to be our man Griezmann. I've been waiting for this card, to be honest. He is elite. Kind of coming up, and to be honest, he went under the radar. I didn't realize this year he's had four informs. Again, Team of the Weeks are not necessarily looked at until team of the season until then we judge okay he's had five team of the weeks he's got to be in team of the season obviously fifa based more than anything but he's really gone under the radar and a very nice 94 that you can go with we then also have some absolutely incredible wingers obviously vinicius is going to be our number one a five star five star like his foot birthday 95 rated and at the moment just shy of seven million coins he is very much in contention with a Neymar moments if we do manage to, a team of the season, Rashford, and obviously at the moment, a prime Ronaldinho, 23 SBCs, still getting over it. But in terms of Vinny, he is absolutely electric. If you've not seen the review at the end of this, I do issue to go and have a look at him because he is just wonderful down the wing. And if you have got the coins, then just go and have a try. You've got to have a look at him. We then move on to the defenders. We have a couple here in mind in Eda Militao and Kayunde absolutely cracking centre-backs. Obviously, with Militao, he does have himself a Team of the Year version as a 94. So, we have only really got plus ones and maybe a couple of plus twos across the board. Nothing too crazy from that upgrade, but we know that he is going to be absolutely sensational as well. And a big one that has come in this week is Kayunde, a 93 centre-back, only one in form, and then also a Phenoms card, one in centre-back, and is in form in a right-back. But this 92 pace centre-back is looking incredible. Some very good dribbling from him, some incredible physicality, a number one pick, as well with that anchor 96 pace 98 defending and 94 physical he is absolutely light years above plus some great links to Varane and obviously all of the other French boys if then we move on we have got a bit of Modric and Lewandowski two incredible cards again with Modric very much like his team of the year I believe that was 96 we haven't really had anything massive of an upgrade other than he has now got a five-star weak foot again I do like when they update these to really max out the potential of the weak foot and skill move as well because it's all good getting plus ones, twos, maybe even a plus three, four from an upgrade of an overall of one, but you cannot replace a weak foot or skill move upgrade. So I do like the fact that they have gone really nicely, uh, kind of really, really hard on them this year. They've really tried to actually update that because I think it does have a massive impact on a card. May not be the most physical player in the world, and that is Modric through and through. He reminds me very much of your Xavi and Iniesta's incredible passing, incredible amounts of agility and pace in the midfield. But when it comes to being a defender, is not really a box-to-box, -box, if anything, even if he does say that he does have 86 defending. I don't see it. Obviously, with his dribbling as well, it is absolutely maxed out at 99, as well as the passing. Pretty much the only thing that's not 99 is the free kick accuracy and one on the curve that is missing. But again, another sensational centre mid that most definitely will get into a lot of teams if you have got that floating midfielder that runs through and doesn't need to defend too much. With Lewandowski, on the other hand, again, another elite striker. Reminds me, and, and both of them have been very similar throughout the years. They both remind me of Harry Kane and Lewandowski together. Tall. I think uh, he's got... Has he got an average build or is it high in average? It's a unique body type. So, okay. So, that makes sense. But in terms of what they possess, they're both tall. I think Harry Kane's 6'2", I want to say. Lewandowski's 6'1". Incredible amounts of body strength. Obviously, the pace on these later versions are always nice. And with Lewandowski, especially starting at 91... 
it does take till team of the season to get him anywhere near the final product. The 92, the 94 are not really going to hit it. You need a 96 and above Lewandowski, very much like Harry Kane, and most definitely, he will not disappoint on his shooting. But then we have a few more average players, to be honest. There is, again, there, there is a lot of top-end players still, but there is a lot of dead wood in, I must admit, in this La Liga team. When we look at Fakir... Again, he doesn't really strike too much fear in my eyes compared to when we saw him the few years ago now. I want to say it was a road to the final or road to the knockout that we got from him that kind of just set him alight. The left foot was sweet, the dribbling was nice, and he just definitely seemed quite meta. This year, I definitely find him a bit under that value. I don't necessarily put him in that top, top category that I normally would. If then we look at a few of the others, the, the thing that you've got to always remember with these cards is they are there purely for pack purposes. They're not necessarily there to really be the ones that go into the team. And it has to happen because if we just put in this top row, maybe we throw in a Rafinha and a Valverde, but then we don't have any Underwood you're just not going to be able to either get them because the value is going to be so high. The pack weight would be ridiculous. You've got to have some lower standard cards. And I must admit, there is a few that are more than average, if anything. We've got a lot of them from objectives. Gaia managed to get himself one this time. And even though the stats do look very nice, it all goes down to the in-game ability. And I do think when it comes to objectives, they tend to lack out a little bit. We've got numerous amount of left backs. I think where's we've got Balde as well. We've got three left backs in here. 93 pace, 94 and 96. Obviously Balde finishes on the actual team, whereas the rest are either on the bench and Gaia obviously in the objectives. I do think Balde is most definitely one of the better ones. I still personally prefer uh, Cap de Villa of anybody. Even the World Cup slash the Fantasy Foot is going to be the number one in La Liga personally. And the rest would go under suit. They have got good pace and they might be able to do something in a lower ranking team. Obviously, there is a reason why I believe most of them are about 30,000 coins now. Balde is still holding his value at just shy of 200. But again, this is the reason why we have cheaper players. If then we look at the, some of the center mids, obviously we have got some ones that are relatively okay. I think, is he the only one? There. Then we've obviously got Pedri, another very elite player, if we do say so myself. 1.7 mil at the moment. Obviously, he does have a 91 that was an SBC, and we are seeing some very good upgrades from him. A nice quadruple upgrade, and obviously, a, I think he's a 5 star, 5 star now. Yeah, a five-star, five-star. So you can never argue with a midfielder like that. A great player that 100% offers himself as the top end. And then also, just to counter-argue that, uh, counter that one, Valverde is elite. We have been waiting for this card for the whole of FIFA. We saw him from his very first player of the month way, way back when. And then obviously, he's managed to get another in form, a second in form, a road to the final, as well as then an honourable. And now we have got the 93, which... I feel like could have been higher. I reckon if Pedri's getting a 95, I feel like Valverde definitely could have at least been 94. But the pace on him alone is incredible. 94 pace. He's got the defending, the physical, the dribbling, the passing. It's all absolutely elite from him. And I do think with Valverde, a lot of it is body type and just natural ability from how he's kind of manufactured in the game. Pedri's going to have the upper hand being a 5-star, five 5-star. Five but Valverde definitely in-game feels that little bit better. So an absolute class player, if anybody does say so myself. I'd like to tell you about skycoach.gg. They offer many features within the FIFA franchise, from FIFA coins to FIFA weekend league boosts, from trusted sellers, pro players, and are the best prices on the market currently. They have fast delivery, high quality services, lots of games, and also a cashback program. The more coins you buy, the more eligible you are for cashback options. So if you want to buy FIFA coins at the best price, click the link in the description of this video. It will be active promo code for 10% discount from my subscribers. All you have to use is the code JT11 at the checkout to receive this bonus. On to the video. We then do have Rafinha as the SBC. The first one from yesterday. 92 right wing and a cracking one to get into your team. Obviously, we do have already Rodrigo as a right wing. And we have Garincha, Jarzinho, Best. There is a lot of right wings at that top end. And I'm, I'm leaving out Messi and all of them as well. So th there is a lot to go with. And it depends on who you've got. Whether you'd want to do him. Brazilian squad. 
always got to be representing obviously the best right wing you can get for Barcelona at the moment and I do think he offers a good solution on that right side for the La Liga obviously in terms of right wings I don't think we've actually got anybody we've got obviously Vinicius on the left we then have Carrasco left. We have Iza, not really going to do it. Lorente is more of a center mid than anything. So he is kind of your best option for La Liga at the moment. And I want to say, am I absolutely sure there is no right wing that we don't know about other than obviously Rodrigo? And it looks like he is. So a four-star, four-star, right wing. I'm not going to quite say S for him. I do think the pace is going to be very nice for him. But there is hundreds of players down that wing now. There is obviously Saka from the Prem who can, again, do just the same value. So I think just under the S would be for me. But he is definitely one of the topper cards. But I think if I was going to pick him out of the right wings, Rodrigo would be number one. Then we have a few of the lower ones. Pau Torres. Personally, for me, good centre-back, great for free, but most definitely not going to be considered one in the team at the moment, especially with all of the centre-backs we've got out. Lorente always does it i don't know what it is about the card but since i think either last year or the year before when he burst on the scenes with all of them stats he has just been magnificent in that mid so for me if i'm thinking of this 95 pace 90 defending obviously passing as well as dribbling i, I feel like he's got to be he's got to be in that s category i don't feel like there's another argument where he doesn't obviously then we go into a few of the others we've got uh, is it marino i want to say Again, very average in my opinion. I don't feel like he'll be in there for very long. If he is in your team, predominantly it would be for La Liga Cup more than anything. And I want to say, I, oh, there he is, 132k. Yeah, there, there's nothing really there that makes me think, okay, this is going to be a guy that's going to go into the team. Is a very, very similar objective. is purely for the objective to get Carrasco, and that's about it. I feel like Carrasco, for me, dropped down to an A+. We have then a striker from the La Liga Cup for winning five. I think it's that one anyway. He, again, is not necessarily going to offer you a great deal. A three-star, five-star. He's free for a reason, and I feel like the body type is in-game is going to be a lot worse than what the stats do suggest. We then have Molina as the right back. Honestly, incredible. Anchor turns him into a 94 right back. Rivals Jesus Navas. And that's probably the only competition you're going to see for right now. A great Argentinian right back that definitely needs some respect on the name in terms of being that pre that La Liga right back. And finally, to Stegen. I didn't know whether I'd like him. I thought he'd be a good keeper. But honestly, we've done a few Champs games, a few La Liga games with him. Way better than Courtois. And I don't know if they've nerfed Courtois' team of the year or whatever. To Stegen is amazing. Genuinely really good on the reflex saves. Manages to actually save a lot of one-on-ones. And that's going to be the list. So let me know down below what you think about them. Is this list going on your opinion? Apart from that, make sure you like and subscribe. Peace.